All right, welcome. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rita, and I am the Program and Technology Specialist for the Wood County Committee on Aging. We're bringing you here today a program that will be fit for our Virtual Learning Academy, and it will end up on our YouTube channel for you to view afterwards. Um, I am really excited to introduce our presenter today. This is Mike McMaster, who is the Education Programs Coordinator for the Wood County Museum. And uh, Mike, remind me, 17 years, 18? 17 years, you? yes. Wow, well, so you've been here a long time and today's program is focusing on Ellen White and the great controversy. So feel free to go ahead, I'm excited to hear it. All right. All right, can you see? Let's see, go back one. Yes. Yes, we can. All right, let's see if I can advance the screen. Yeah, let's see. Hmm. Let's stop share. Can you see that? It stopped the sharing. No. I think you'll have to share your desktop like we did last time. Yep. Then, yeah, let me try it one more time. Let's see. There we go. Okay, share screen. And which is a desktop? Should be your desktop, and then you'll be able to okay. open up your PowerPoint. Yeah, all right, let's see. There, can you see the picture of the museum? Yes. All right, um, I'll start the program. My name is Mike McMaster. Um, a few things, I have the squeakiest office chair ever, so I'll try to endeavor to sit as perfectly still as possible. Um, you will see a picture of the Wood County Museum. I've worked um, as the education coordinator for 17 years. Um, and I'll start this program with a story. About 12 years ago, I was asked to give the history of every church in Wood County in 20 minutes. And I told the lady, I don't think I could list all the churches in Wood County in 20 minutes. So I chose the, what I felt was the most interesting church that no longer stands in its present location um, to give a program on. And that is the question um, in front of us. What happened in Wood County, March 14th, 1858? And it's Wood County and the Great controversy. Um, the image in the center is a drawing of what that 1858 church might have looked like. But to know what happened in 1858, which was before all of our times, we must know who Ellen G. White was. Um, she had a vision, if you are a Seventh-day Adventist, from God in 1858. Um, Ellen Gould White was born in 1827. Um, she lived to um, 1915. Now, Ellen White um, was born, um, Ellen Harmon, November 22nd, 1827, near Gorham, Maine. Um, at the age of nine, um, she was hit by a thrown rock and rendered unconscious um, for some time, this trauma ended her formal education. And she said of this misfortune, um, that this misfortune, which for a time seemed so bitter and was so hard to bear, has proved to be a blessing in disguise. The cruel blow which blighted the joys of earth was the means of turning my eyes to heaven. I might never had known Jesus Christ, had not the sorrow that clouded my early years led me to seek comfort in him. Now, in 1840, when she was 12 years old, her family became involved in the Millerite movement. The Millerite movement was named after the man on the left, William Miller. Um, in the 1820s, he became a minister. Um, and in 1822, he stated that I believe that the second coming of Jesus Christ is near, 
even at the door, even within 21 years on or before 1843. And her family's involvement in Millerism caused their disfellowship um, by the local Methodist church. Now, even though William Miller never set a specific date for the second coming, his publishers, um, his uh, followers, and other Adventist ministers did. Now, how did he determine um, whether, when the second coming was? This is the picture, the study that he made that for every one year in the Old Testament was one day um, in, in the present time. But uh, the date of October 22nd, 1844 um, was set as the date of the second coming. Now, here's an interesting uh, cartoon I found from about that time. It shows the grand ascension of the Miller Tabernacle, Miller in his glory. You can see him sitting at the top with that drawing, saints and sinners in one great conglomeration. And there is uh, people looking at his temple, people falling off. He is sitting there on top of that poster we had just seen. But we know that the second coming did not occur on October 22nd, 1844. And the date that followed was called the Great Disappointment. Um, Millerite people sat on the roofs of their log cabins, supposedly in their ascension robes, and one of them wrote of the Great Disappointment, our fondest hopes and expectations were blasted, and such a spirit of weeping came over us I had never experienced before. We wept and wept till the day dawned. Now, her faith in the second coming was not deterred, and at the age of 17, Ellen Harmon received her first vision one morning late in December 1844. As her fellow Adventists were falling away from their faith, she saw a vision that heaven seemed near to the praying group, and as the power of God rested on Ellen, she witnessed in vision the travels of the Advent people to the city of God. Now, when Ellen was younger, um, on a trip to Orrington, Maine, Ellen met a young Adventist preacher named James White, who was then 23 years of age. As their labors occasionally brought them to the two together, they sprang an affection that led to their being united in marriage in August of 1848. Um, they had moved their publishing and um, headquarters for their Adventist face from Rochester, New York to Battle Creek, Michigan in 1855. Um, Battle Creek, Michigan at that time um, was known as a healthy retreat, a good eating, um, things that were um, important to them. Now from 1844 when she was 17 receiving her first vision to 1863 she experienced between 100 and 200 visions mainly in public places and meeting halls and later in life the visions occurred at their home during the night. Minister John L. Law or John N. Lofbar had seen Ellen White in vision 50 times and he stated, in passing into vision, she gives the enrapturing shouts of glory, which echo and re-echo the second and especially the third, fainter but more thrilling than the first, the voice resembling that of one quite distant from you and just going out of hearing. Um, it is also said that um, when she would go into vision, she could um, at one time hold her parents' 18 and a half pound family Bible outstretched in her left hand for a half an hour. And at this time she weighed but 80 pounds. She was also supposedly did not breathe 
during the entire vision period that range from 15 minutes to three hours. Um, so that was pretty miraculous um, for if you were a Seventh-day Adventist. Now, in where this brings us very close to Wood County. In 1858, G.W. Holt gave a course of lectures on the Adventist views in a schoolhouse at Lovett's Grove in Wood County. And there's James White preaching. Um, where is Lovett's Grove? Here, hopefully you can see this map. Bowling Green in the center, that center road that goes to the, where it says O'Mears, and there's that church building. That is um, where the Seventh-day Adventist Church, where Lovett's Grove was. At one time, there was a post office at Lovett's Grove that disappeared many, many, many years before. That road is State Route 25, if you drive from Bowling Green north to Perrysburg and look to the west, your left, the church is not there anymore, but there is a state historical marker. At about this time is March 14, 1858. James White and Ellen White take the train into Wood County and travel to Lovett's Grove. Um, part during the funeral um, of a young lad who had died and they were going to bury at Union, um, Union Hill Cemetery. Um, Ellen and James White were holding a meeting and James was asked to speak. When Ellen was moved to bear her testimony during the funeral, partway through her talk, she went into a two hour vision in front of the congregation. Um, in this vision, mostly concerned the matter of what she called the great controversy. The next day on a train, they began arranging plans for writing and publishing um, the future book immediately upon their return to Battle Creek. Um, the great controversy she had seen in vision 10 years before, but at this time, um, she was shown that she must write it out. And at the right is a copy of the book, The Great Controversy Between Christ and Satan. Now, at a stopover from Bowling Green to Battle Creek, Ellen experienced a stroke of paralysis, which made writing virtually impossible. At first, she wrote one page a day and then rested for three. But as she progressed, her strength increased. And by the time she finished the book, all effects of the stroke were gone. The book was completed by mid-August 1858 and entitled Spiritual Gifts, Volume 1, The Great Controversy Between Christ and His Angels and Satan and His Angels. Now, what is the book about? Um, it is written in the first person with the phrase, I saw, being used 161 times to refer to the author's experience in receiving um, the vision given to her, enabled her to write the book. The book describes the whole history of sin chronologically from before sin entered the universe to after its final destruction um, uh, in the new earth. Uh, it also explains why the great disappointment occurred and why the second coming was not in 1844. Um, the author herself um, valued the book above silver and gold and recommended it to be circulated to all. Um, it um, was first used for an Adventist author or audience, but then also as an evangelical tool. Um, during her lifetime, um, Ellen White wrote um, more than 5,000 periodical articles and 40 books. Um, but today, including compilations from her 50,000 pages of manuscripts, more than 100 titles are available in English and every other language. Um, she is often um, 
described as being the most translated woman writer in the history of especially American literature, um, because all of her books are printed in nearly every language by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now, I said that there is a state historical marker there. Um, that state historical marker has been a little bit weathered since this photograph was taken, um, but it is on the location of the Lovett's Grove Seventh-day Adventist Church, and it reads that Elder Oliver Mears organized on February 8, 1862, in a tent on this spot, then a walnut grove owned by William Lovett, the Lovett's Grove Seventh-day Adventist Church, the first denomination of its kind in Ohio, a frame building erected in 1868, served the congregation until 1911 when it was moved to its present location in Bowling Green. The little greenhouse in the background was built many, many years after that church was gone. Uh, after doing some research, I did find this photograph taken in about the 1940s. Um, like many one-room schoolhouses at that time period, um, they were moved, used as barns, used as churches, and this supposedly was the church that she received her vision um, in 1858, which has been tore down. That is the last slide of Ellen White. Hopefully you found this story interesting. Um, and I do have a few things. Um, first, the Wood County Museum is open Monday through Friday, 10 to 4, and Saturday and Sunday, 1 to 4, with senior admissions, um, adult admission, children admission, um, and veterans discount. Um, right now on the left, People, Places, and Things is an exhibit. There are thousands of photographs of Wood County history also from last year for comfort and convenience, the history of Ohio poor farms. Every, every county in Ohio had a poor farm. And also the Bach exhibit is back on display. Um, Carl and Mary Bach um, exhibit came here in 1975. Today it is in a museum quality case with information about the murder, about the trial, and about the hanging. It's very comprehensive. Every Friday, if you visit the Wood County Museum's um, Facebook page, I post a Friday history post. Um, you can read those. And we always have updates on the museum. And if you remember how steep the stairs are at the county home, we have a fully serviceable elevator from behind the building where the well-marked handicapped spaces are into the elevator to the first and second floor. So no more handicap ramp, no more walking the great distance from the um, parking lot. And that is the last slide I have. Thank you, Mike. That was wonderful and very interesting as usual. You always do a really nice job with all of your programs. And we are planning on, until further notice, hoping to have you on every month with us. So I hope everybody keeps an yeah, eye Yes, so I have plenty of new talks as well. Yeah, that's great. So now I'm going to open the floor. I'm going to prompt you, everyone, to unmute themselves if you would, in fact, like to ask Mike any questions. So give me one second. I will work on that here. Oh, good. All right. Does anybody have anything to ask or share with Mike at this time? Yeah, I have a question, Rita. He said every county in what, well, every farm. Every, every county in Ohio. A farm. What did it mean? It was the county home. It was the nursing home, orphanage, jail for the mentally insane, home for the poor, home for the disabled. Oh. It was the county home. They used this building okay. to 1971 when they built Wood Haven, the new county home, except we don't call it county homes anymore. Okay, because when you said poor farm, 
I thought maybe there was a farm that you know people. Oh owned. no no, that was okay. your original You're term, talking. right? Okay. The county home, gotcha. county home. <laughs> okay, I understand. That's a really yeah. good question, Denilda. I was wondering yeah. the same thing. Yep. Good. Anything else? Anybody? So now is is uh, Woodhaven the only nursing home? that's run by the county? No, I think there are 13 counties in Ohio that run county homes, except they don't call them county homes anymore. Right. Um, okay. A few of the original buildings are still being used, but not very many of them. Many have been tore down. Okay, thank you. We, we always called it the poor house because, or the poor, farm because it was a farm and they were all self-sustaining. I remember that hmm. um, all the time. I had a question though. Go ahead. And you said something about the Seventh Day Adventist Church was moved to Bowling Green. In 1911. Now I take that as meaning it says at its present location. I have been in that Seventh-day Adventist church, it looks as if they added on a few times. It is on, um, is it what, South Manville Street? I think okay, it's on it Enterprise. Is. Enterprise, close, yes. South Enterprise. I've been in that church, but you cannot tell if any of that is part of the original 1860s church. I couldn't tell. And nobody at that church knew. So did they move it, tear it down and build the church today? Or did they move it and build onto it so much you can't tell anymore? Hmm. Huh. Right, thank Question. You. Go ahead. Question. Um, the book, The Great Controversy, is it still in print? Has it been reprinted? Yeah, oh yeah. If, if you give this talk, at the Seventh-day Adventist Church, they will give you as many copies as you want. It's uh, still in, it's still in um, print today in many, many, any language you want. Um, there's a copy right behind me um, on my bookshelf. Have you read it? Cover to cover, since it was written in the 1850s, 1850s books are challenging to read compared to how books are today. Um, I've paged through it. Um, it. Like I said, I've read the uh, um, reviews about it, the summaries, uh, but I've never read it cover to cover. It's a thick book. Okay. Yeah. You, you, that, how big is it? Is it easy to get off your shelf? Can we see it? Oh, it's it's about as thick as a Bible is. <laughs> oh. Wow. Interesting. Hey, this oh. is uh, Don Rosa. Can you hear me? Yes, I yeah. can. Um, I read a book. It's called Heaven's Ditch, Gold, God, and Murder on the Erie Canal. Hmm. And uh, it, uh, it, I originally thought it was going to focus on the construction of the canal. It really doesn't. It focuses on the political social history of the time period and how the Erie Canal fit into that. But there's a, a lot of material on Miller and the Miller yes. rights, and, and, also, and also the Mormons. Right, they moved from both, um, Miller got his printing press, um, the Mormon church got their printing press through that Erie Canal moving west across upstate New York in what they called the Burnt Over District. It was called the Burnt Over District because there had been so many religious revivals in the Second Great Awakening, there was no one left to save. It had <laughs> been completely burnt over. What was the name of that book that you mentioned, Gold God? And no, it's, it's Heaven's Ditch. And the subtitle is Gold, God, and Murder on the er Erie Canal. Thank you. Uh, I also might add that uh, the murder part involves uh, the Masons. <clears throat> oh, no. yeah, there was a lot of a lot of controversy involving the Masons at uh. that particular period of time. I have another talk which we I've given <clears throat> once or twice before about the 
um, an introduction to spiritualism that is communicating with the dead in 18, the 1840s. And it also deals with the movement of Miller, the movement of the Mormons, um, the movement of Seventh-day Adventists through that canal in upstate New York. It's no coincidence that the beginning of what we know as the seance started very near that canal, near Rochester, New York. Hmm. Wow. wow. Any other final questions? All right. Well, I really appreciate you, Mike. You know that. We are very grateful for you to come on to Zoom for us. And this is just, it's so different, but we're getting used to it, right? We're doing yes. good. <laughs> Thank you all for joining today, and uh, we'll hopefully see you next time. Thank you. Thanks, Rita. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.